With Halloween around the corner, people have got spooky stories and the paranormal on their mind. So I thought this was the perfect time for me to share 13 haunted historic cemeteries in the Dallas-Fort Worth region of Texas. The stars and lights are big and bright in paranormal Texas, where haunted rooms smell like perfume. In paranormal Texas, a lady in white gives you a fright. In paranormal Texas. This is a great time of year to visit historic cemeteries anyway. Plus, it's also pretty easy to do social distancing when you're exploring a historic cemetery. In addition to some spooky haunted history, I'm going to share a little bit of paranormal evidence. Also, I'm going to share some true ghost stories. At least one of them will be mine. Uh, the rest will have come from readers who have, were so kind as to share their experiences with me. And we will also have a lot of haunted history. In case you're new here, my name is Tui Snyder. I write books. I give talks. I take photos. And I do a whole lot of historic research. I love digging up interesting things and then sharing them with you guys. It's so fun. The stars and lights are big and bright in paranormal Texas. I wanted to share this cemetery first because the experience I had there actually changed my mind. Uh, I would say it opened my mind about the idea of haunted cemeteries. I actually, as you know, my channel's called Exploring Historic Cemeteries. This is something I do a lot of. However, I really don't think of cemeteries as spooky, creepy places. I like to go there during the daytime anyway. I have gone at night every now and then with groups, but you know, you can't see what's going on and I trip over things. I don't go to a cemetery specifically looking for ghosts and haunted experiences. When I'm there, it's for historic purposes, maybe to clarify the spelling of a name or just find out some new things to get some pictures of some interesting cemetery symbols and all that. I mean, I say this all the time. To me, cemeteries are open air museums. They aren't creepy, they aren't macabre. On the other hand, the idea of a haunted theater or bookstores, libraries, haunted ballrooms, that all makes sense to me because I expect ghosts to hang out in places they enjoyed while they were alive. So, you know, when it comes to a haunted cemetery, maybe a groundskeeper or someone who really enjoyed cemeteries, like I guess me, I could see myself haunting a cemetery, but Let's hope that doesn't happen for a very long time. My point is, I just used to kind of roll my eyes at the idea of haunted cemeteries, but I had this experience, which I'm going to share with you, and then I had to eat crow, so to speak, and uh, realize that, well, cemeteries can be just as haunted as any other place. So here we go. It was the morning after a paranormal investigation at the Crazy Water Hotel in Mineral Wells. And wow, we had a very active night and some crazy stuff happened at the crazy water. I'll tell you about that another time. It was about 9.30 in the morning and my husband and I were there and my friend Teal Gray was with us. Teal Gray is a psychic medium. And the funny thing is she can tell when I have been to a cemetery. It is so funny. I have gone, one time I showed up at her office and the minute I walked in, she's like, Tui, oh my gosh, where, have you just been to a cemetery? I'm like, well, yeah, how did you know? And she said, you have a little entourage of spirit children around you. And it's become a bit of a 
a joke, a running joke with us because she can always tell right away if I have recently been to a cemetery. I didn't know this. And the weird thing is she is not the only person to have told me this over the years. Apparently I attract children's spirits, whatever that's all about. I mean, in real life, you know, I, I often like to sit at the kids table at Thanksgiving. I do love children, I gotta say, but it's just one of those strange things. Anyway, there we are. We were all three exploring this beautiful historic cemetery. It's called Elmwood Cemetery. And all of a sudden, Teal goes, Tui, you've got to go over there and check out that headstone. So I'm like, okay. I go over and I see it's for a man named Richard Dykerhoff. I'm thinking, oh, okay. And it says he was born in Germany, died in Mineral Wells. All right. And then the next line down, I see his epitaph. And it says, the orphan's true friend. Wow, isn't that neat? So I'm wondering how he got that title. And that sounds very fascinating. And I have tried looking it up. I still have not figured out what his connection was. Like, did he run an orphanage there? And if you know anything about him, leave a comment below for me. Because it's something I'm continuing to research. And I haven't turned up anything yet. Anyway, I kind of kneel down so I can take a photo, frame it up get that the right lighting on his epitaph and as i'm doing so i hear children giggling i kid you not and it, loud this was not in my head i hear the sound of children giggling but what was weird so i stand up and it was like about 10 feet ahead of me a little to the right by some like a, a bush you know a thin bush and a tree if there had been kids standing there i should have seen them pretty easily so i stand up and I look over there, and as I'm standing up, I forgot this part, a little image flashed through my head, a bit like a daydream. Like I imagined three little kids there, maybe five through seven years old, and they're kind of like, you know, tee hee hee, like hiding, you know, behind the tree. But um, I did definitely hear that. The, the giggling was like an external sound. I look over there, I guess you can see where this is going. <laughs> Nothing was there. I ran over there. I shouldn't run in a cemetery, but I did. And I looked all over, no sign of kids anywhere. It wasn't like we were across the street from a school. It's in the middle of a big garden style cemetery. So, and to top it off, I got these incredible chills just all up my arms, my neck. I could just, I was like, holy, you know, when something has happened that's just anomalous and you were like, whoa, what just happened? I kicked myself for not taking a bunch of pictures. Maybe I would have picked something up. And of course, I did not have my digital recorder with me. It was back in the car. Maybe if I had been taking a little video right then, I would have gotten some giggling kids. Wouldn't that have been great? Ah, oh well. I do plan to return and uh, you know have my recorder there. And if anything happens, I will definitely share with you guys. But after that, I have to had to change my attitude about haunted cemeteries, they can happen. So there you go. I'm gonna show The stars and nights are big and bright in paranormal Texas. All right, our next stop is Arlington, Texas. This is where there's a hidden burial ground that's come to be known as the Lost Cemetery of Infants. This mysterious cemetery is all that remains of a home for, you know, quote unquote, fallen women that was created in 1894. And it, at one time, it covered more than 40 acres, this institute. But now all that remains is this hidden graveyard. This institute was created by a man named Reverend Tony Upchurch. And it was actually rather forward thinking for the time because back in the 1800s, if you were a woman who had really challenging experience, uh, out of wedlock pregnancy, maybe you were a runaway or an addict or you'd been abused, just unfortunate situations, even the most, even churches and other charitable institutions, they might turn their back on you. So he was thinking ahead, he created a place for these women to go, and if they were pregnant, they could have their children. Well, as you can imagine, back then, uh, the 
infant mortality rate was rather high, and so not all of these children survived. And so now there's this little cemetery there that is easy to walk by, and I'll tell you why. Most of the grave markers there are flat, and rather than having names, they will say things like infants, and they'll have a number, so we'll say like twins, number six, infant, number 12. And that might seem very cold and impersonal, but there was a reason for this. Because Reverend Upchurch planned for these women to learn marketable skills and then return to society as proper young ladies without their reputations being sullied. So they wouldn't want to have that lady's last name or any reference to her on the headstone of their child because that way this would, you know, their reputation could be, this could be kept a secret when they returned back to society. So that's the reason for the numbers, but it is a very strange experience to go there. I have a, a video that goes into a lot more detail about this home for unwed mothers, um, but you can, I'll put a, a, one of those links, those YouTube linky things, so you can check it out and learn more about it. As far as paranormal activity goes, here people have picked up EVPs that sound like small children's voices. Uh, they have reported feeling as though little hands were touching them, stroking their hair. It's very common to get the feeling that you are being watched when you were there, and I have felt that very strongly when I visited. Uh, people see shadowy figures darting around. I haven't experienced that. I've also heard that uh, trigger items, like if you brought a teddy bear and had it sitting there, it might move, or a ball, something for children to play with, and you wait, so one of the children might play with it. So that's something to consider. Now there are a lot of little toys that have been left at that the cemetery, the lost cemetery of infants. And when people leave gifts behind, you know, items behind at a grave, that is called a grave good. That is grave goods. That's not the same thing as trigger items. A trigger item is something that a paranormal research brings and then they take it home with them. Grave goods, that's a, a large topic. I actually wrote a book about it earlier this year. I just made an ebook because I wanted to help clarify to people. People get a lot of ideas. Some people get upset when they see items like a teddy bear left behind at a grave site. They think of it as garbage, but it's a cultural thing. Some people find that comforting. They want to leave toys behind. I've been to some, what they call baby land sections of cemeteries. Baby land section is the most heartbreaking section of a cemetery. It's where, you know, they will just have a lot of children there. I have trouble walking through them. Actually, I start crying, but um, I, it's fascinating to see them. Sometimes they are just full of toys. Uh, and that is not, that's not garbage. That is grave goods. I just wanted to throw that out there because there is a misconception. I've gotten some angry emails from people who say that I'm promoting the idea of people leaving garbage in cemeteries. And I'm not promoting this. This is just many different cultures do this. And I'm just commenting on it. And ghost hunters, like I said, they bring trigger items, not grave goods. I hope I have cleared that up a little bit. A lot of the cemeteries that I'm mentioning today can be found in my book, Paranormal Texas. This is a travel guide to haunted places, not just cemeteries, but haunted places that you can actually visit. So let's say, you know, you want to go on a ghost hunt, but you don't know where you can politely go and hunt. My book will explain that. It's also a lot of fun for armchair travel. Now, people sometimes think, this is a book of fiction, and I always bristle at that because they have no idea how much historic research I did and I put into this book. In fact, I only include places that have some sort of historic basis to them. If there's no historic basis to it, then I consider it an urban legend and I don't include it in this book. And I actually make quite a distinction between an urban legend and actual haunted history. Uh, and I also do my best to clarify and untangle the bits of lore that have grown around, up around a story and distorted the truth. And in this next example, uh, the urban legend is actually rather slanderous. 
ah, I'm, I wanted to clean up this person's reputation because that's just wrong. I love a good story, but, but don't slander people. The stars and nights are big and bright in Paranormal Texas. I am talking about Smiley's Grave. This is a very well-known story, even outside of Texas. But if you live in North Texas and you're interested in the paranormal, you've probably heard of Smiley's Grave. And I've had people tell me that back in the day, you know, they would tell, this is one of those stories that they enjoyed telling to their date, in a place to drive at night. You know, a guy might take a girl there and hope she gets scared enough that he could put his arm around her. I get that, that's neat and all that. But here, I wanna clarify the truth about Smiley's Grave. And once again, I do have a full video going into more detail about this, uh, but here's the deal. There is an urban legend that sprang up around this. There's a mass grave in Garland, Texas. It has five people buried in the same grave. They all died on the same day. And the legend that grew up around this is that it, it says smiley, smiley on it. Is, was what the headstone said. I'm gonna show you just a second here. But I just wanted to say that when I find out about a haunted place, I, you know, it says it's haunted by Joe Blow. I go and I look up and I see if a Joe Blow ever lived there. I look into archives, newspaper, old newspapers, and I might find, hey, you know what? There was actually a Jerry Blow who lived there. You know, Joe Blow, that's not his real name. But I wanna get the, to the factual aspects of it. And I also, just to kind of offer some respect, that's one of my ways of offering respect to the past and respect to the dead. I don't make up stuff about them. Over in Garland, Texas, in Mills Cemetery, which is a beautiful historic cemetery, that is where you will find Smiley's grave. It's a really tragic story, but it's become extremely distorted by an urban legend and all sorts of variants. I won't go into them, if you want to know all the urban, you know, more about it, I guess check out my full video. The long and short of it is that in May of 1927, there was a horrific nighttime tornado that ripped through Garland, ripped through North Texas, in fact. There were dozens killed. And that's what happened to the Smiley family. Um, it wasn't Mr. Smiley, as you will hear, that's the urban legend. Maybe he was a jerk. Maybe he was a nice guy. I don't know but he did not slaughter his entire family. So let's quit blaming him for what a tornado did. Now that said, this grave does seem to have paranormal activity around it. And maybe that's just what happens when so much energy is focused toward one area. But I have to say, I was there in the afternoon with my husband and we were both uneasy. He said, and he doesn't even believe in ghosts. He was like, this place gives me the creeps. And he kind of kept looking over his shoulders felt like we were being washed. It was strange energy there, I've got to say. I felt very sad, but you know, that makes sense. I mean, five people, they lost their life in such a tragic way. I can't say that I felt anything sinister, but you know, this is, so I'm not saying there isn't paranormal activity there. I'm just saying, don't blame it on Mr. Smiley. Okay, I've got to ask you, do you have any paranormal pet peeves? Because I actually, I guess I've already mentioned a couple of mine. But one of mine is a really big one of my paranormal pet peeves is when people act as if ghosts and anomalous things, strange experiences can only happen in the dark, late at night. I'm here to tell you some of my most weird, out of the world, paranormal, ghosty experiences have happened in broad daylight. I mean, like that, I told you the very first one, that Elmwood Cemetery, that was 9.30 in the morning and I'm hearing that. That was not some creepy thing. So my point is, yeah, we watch the ghost shows and they're, they're out in the dark walking around with uh, infrared cameras or whatever, you know, night vision goggles. But I think you're just as likely to have something crazy happen when it's sunny and bright and there's almost something more scary about that. The stars and nights are big and bright in paranormal Texas. So I was happy to hear that CBS.
CBS, a couple of CBS reporters recorded some really interesting and rather eerie EVPs in Arlington Cemetery. I'm talking about Arlington, Texas, because this is all Texas, but in the middle of the day. And you can find that. I'll find the link if I can and add it below. But uh, this was a few years ago and like CBS sent a news crew out there and they picked up some EVPs in this cemetery, Arlington Cemetery. Now, when I was there, I didn't have the, the thought to, you know, I didn't know about these EVPs and I, I wish I'd had my recorder with me, but I did get a weird photo. I don't know, I'll just share it with you and let you see what you think. I, um, I did have a strange feeling in this area. I just kind of go, go with it and start taking pictures. And this one photo has like a little bit of a weird like arc of mist going through it. I don't know what it is and I didn't notice it until I got home. So I'm not sure what that is. I have taken hundreds and hundreds of photos, thousands really. I'm such a shutter bug and I've only had two, I think, where I found something pretty anomalous. One of them was featured on Coast to Coast AM. It was a total fluke. I was at a party uh, in the afternoon. Afternoon again, there we go. Um, you know, it was getting towards dusk when I captured it, this interesting photo. I can show it to you if you want. But, um, and then this other one. So I'm not someone who gets a lot of anomalous photos. I wish I did. But tell me what you think of this one. I don't know what to make of it. And it was in Arlington, Old Arlington Cemetery, which is a beautiful historic cemetery. The stars and night are big and bright in paranormal Texas. One thing I noticed while researching historic haunted places in North Texas is that there are a lot of haunted bridges in the world. I don't, I don't know why I had not really noticed before that haunted bridges are a thing. Now here in North Texas, one of our famous haunted bridges is called Old Alton Bridge. And one of my friends, Becky Vickers, leads a really great tour through there. She also wrote an excellent book on it. So if you're looking for a good scary read, I would recommend it. She did a lot of research into it, which elevated it beyond just urban legend. She really went and looked for the facts behind it. And so I really enjoy her book. But right up the street from that bridge, because we're talking about cemeteries today, there is Old Alton Cemetery. And there's a rather chilling story that goes along with it. When you visit Old Alton Cemetery, and I should say, this, uh, this story I feature is one in my book, Six Feet Under Texas, which isn't spooky stories necessarily, but it's just uh, tales of unique, famous, historic cemeteries throughout Texas. So in Old Alton Cemetery, there is a row of crosses, just seven crosses, no name on the crosses. The reason for this, and this is the chilling tale to me, a family in the 1800s was coming through and they set up camp along nearby Hickory Creek. And uh, the locals didn't get a chance to go and meet them yet. I mean, they had just gotten there, set up camp, doing their thing, probably had a fire and some food, and maybe they had food poisoning, who knows? The entire family, all seven, died. And back then, people didn't carry ID, and there was no way to identify them. The locals went, they looked through their things, they could not find anything that let them know their name, and so, they sewed new dresses for the women and new clothes for them to wear because there was a superstition. You don't want to be buried in your death clothes. Found things to put them in if they could. Um, the men built coffins for them and they buried them in this row. Now, as far as paranormal activity goes in Old Alton Cemetery, I have heard of a mysterious lady in white and I have to laugh because there are so many ladies in white, mysterious lady in white. It's, it's just a thing in the haunted, not just cemeteries, but all sorts of hauntings. I don't know if there's just not much choice of what to wear in the afterlife, or maybe when you can manifest as a spirit, it just looks whitish. I really don't know. It's just one of those interesting things. But I wonder if maybe she, whoever this mysterious figure is that people sometimes claim to see roaming along, in that cemetery. Uh, maybe she was one of this family. If nothing else, I just found that story 
so sad and so mysterious. I would still love to find some way to identify them. The stars and nights are big and bright in Paranormal Texas. Speaking of ladies and whites, Oakwood Cemetery in Fort Worth has its own resident mysterious lady in white who roams around the edge of the cemetery too. I don't know what it is about these ladies in white and why they like to roam the perimeter of cemeteries, but that's the main ghost story I have heard there. Now, if you watched my video from last week about the Saints and Sinners tour at Oakwood Cemetery in Fort Worth, then you already know how much I love this cemetery and how beautiful it is. So you can check that out if you want to know more about it. The stars and nights are big and bright in paranormal Texas. While we're talking about Fort Worth, I should mention Pioneer's Rest Cemetery. This is a smaller cemetery than Oakwood. It's a whole lot smaller, and it's right in the downtown of Fort Worth. Like, I mean, literally, right across the street, you've got apartment buildings. It's just a few blocks from Sundance Square. It's the oldest cemetery in Fort Worth. Now, this is a very historic cemetery, really worth and really interesting and fascinating place. And there have been a lot of paranormal investigations there, actually. And I've seen some really interesting photos. It's, it's, it's like waving incense around. You see smoky, wispy things happening. I have not gotten any crazy photos there. I've taken a lot of photos there. But my, I, maybe, I, maybe because I was only there at 3 in the afternoon, maybe it worked against me. Uh, there's a group called Heaven and Hell Paranormal. And I've mentioned them in a one, another one of my videos. And they found some, they took some really interesting photos in Pioneer's Rest Cemetery. I, there doesn't appear to be a specific ghost that people are aware of, like a lady in white or some type of ghost, but I think it would be an interesting one to go back with and try to get some more EVPs. The stars and nights are big and bright in paranormal Texas. When I give talks, um, usually in a normal year, I'm giving several talks about haunted places in Texas in October. It's just the spooky season and it's fun to do. And afterwards, people come up and share their experiences with me and give me tips on places that are haunted. So this is really helpful and fun for me and I take a lot of notes. Well, after one of my talks, I had a woman come up and tell me about something that happened to her in Keller, Texas at Mount Gilead Cemetery. Now, Mount Gilead is one of my favorite cemeteries, and I do feature it um, in Six Feet Under Texas because it is one of the few cemeteries here in Texas that has really well-preserved pioneer burial cairns. Usually these pioneer burial cairns are these, they're Cairns, they're, oh, I'll show you some pictures. They usually fall into disarray and people just walk right by them and they don't realize they're probably walking by the oldest monument in the cemetery. But anyway, this woman came up after my talk and she, she was just kind of, she was kind of tall. So she sort of stood out, but she was tall and thin and she was trying so hard not to be noticed that it kind of made her stand out. You know, I'm chatting with people and, and, you know, selling a few books and whatever. And, um, sharing stories, I'm taking notes, and she just kind of kept hanging around, hanging around, and even it got to the point where I, I tried making eye contact with her. She was just so withdrawn. I finally was packing my books, putting them away. My husband's helping me, taking stuff out to the car. She waited till it was just me and her, and um, then she kind of made eye contact, and I said, hey, if you have something to say to me, I, I'm not going to make fun of you, because I just got this feeling she looked, you know, so drawn in and nervous. So she shared this story with me. So Margo is a retired history teacher. I don't even know if that's her real name. She said I could call her Margo. She was being so furtive. Uh, but she lives near Mount Gilead Cemetery and she frequently takes walks through there. She has a dog and she was walking through there one time. Her dog began to act a little weird. Her dog began straining against its leash and yipping. And she said her dog barks a certain way when she sees kids because her dog loves kids and wants to go play with them. Well, when she looked up, 
there was nothing there. She looked all around, no children. Yeah, she didn't think much of it. Except it happened again and again and again. And she said there's a certain spot kind of by those pioneer burial cairns and kind of near this cast iron grave, which has an infant, so quite a young child. But there are some children there buried there. So she kind of got, grew to expect it. Her dog not, wouldn't do this every single time, but from time to time, her dog would react as though there were children nearby. So one day she was walking with a friend and she said she was really glad that she had a friend with her or she would have thought she had gone totally bonkers. Her dog did her thing again where she was straining and you know yipping and wanted to get off the leash. She looks up and they both see a little girl who's about eight or nine years old, she said. But she was dressed in the old fashioned, you know, an old fashioned shift dress, kind of a white cotton dress. Maybe that's what you wear when you're a child, not the lady, another lady in white, only this is a child in white. But Margot really emphasized it looked like it wasn't misty, it wasn't ethereal, it looked like a little girl. She and her friend both thought a little girl was standing there. And they looked at her and she just stepped behind a tree. So on a whim, Margo let her dog off the leash because they called out to the little girl. And one thing that really struck her at the time was she was dressed in a, not for the weather. So it kind of bothered her. She was a little worried, I guess. So she let her dog off. Her dog went running over straight to where she and her friend had seen the little girl. No little girl. They went over there too. They walked all around it. There was no way the little child had vanished. They were both shaken up. And she said after that, I said, so now do you believe in the paranormal? And she was kind of like, I'm not going that far. But she said, I no longer think that people who talk about the paranormal or ghosts are total kooks. So for her, that was quite a stretch. And that's the story she shared with me. The stars and nights are big and bright. Our next story takes us to Springtown, Texas. Now, when I first moved to Texas in 2009, this was one of the first kind of ghost stories that I heard. It was even on the news. I don't know if you can really call it a ghost story. It's just an anomalous tale. Now, there's near Springtown, there is a historic country burial ground called Veal Station. It's kind of out in the boonies, it's not in town. And there is allegedly a glowing tombstone here. So I asked my husband, my husband, the mad scientist and former chemistry teacher, if we could go check out this glowing tombstone. And he was really pretty interested because he was saying maybe it's some sort of radioactivity or you know some sort of glowing, or maybe there's a protective coating that they painted over the you know, the tombstone that doesn't show up at day, but kind of glows at night. He had a lot of theories. I mean, really, when you think about it, in nature, there's a lot of bioluminescent, there's mushrooms that glow. There are a lot of organisms that do create light. So he was kind of coming at it from that angle. I just was, you know, my usual clueless angle. I just wanted to go and see it. So I did read a couple books on that mentioned it. I read a lot of books about haunted places around here. And uh, two books that I read mentioned that a particular stone, Wright, the Wright family headstone, that was the stone that glows. So we went out there, like, I think we got some Mexican food, and then afterwards we waited till dusk, and then we went out there before dark, kind of camped out. You're not supposed to walk into the cemetery after dark, so we were good. But before it got dark, we walked in there and I found the Wright headstone right with a W. And then we parked where we could see it as it got dark. And then we sat in our car and just listened to radio shows, you know, old time radio, some fun stuff, and just waited and waited. And I, every now and then I would get out and I would look around. Now, we got faked out a couple times. I saw some yellow lights kind of moving. It was fireflies. I love fireflies. That was cool. Another thing too, a lot of people these days, they will put solar powered pinwheels and things uh, on the grave. So different things were lighting up at night. So I had to, you know, okay, those aren't it. But we, I still kind of had my line of sight on the right headstone. 
Well, the long story short, we waited until it got pitch black and it never glowed. We went back another night, no glow. So I don't know, did we, I mean, both nights we went, uh, there was a bit of a moon. I kept thinking maybe the moon was gonna reflect on something. And that is kind of what happened. We did see one headstone that you could call a glowing headstone, but it was glowing because the moon was hitting the surface of the headstone that was kind of tilted. It wasn't like a headstone like this. It had a surface that went like that. So I, you know, I was a little bummed out. I know that this legend continues, a little disappointed. Maybe I'll go back again and, and who knows, I would love to see a glowing headstone. The stars and night are big and bright in paranormal Texas. Speaking of glowing headstones, let's move along to Deep Creek Cemetery. I have done an entire video about Deep Creek Cemetery and I'm bringing this. I also have featured Deep Creek Cemetery in my new book, my newest book, Six Feet Under Texas. Uh, now, what's interesting is there is, I've heard there is a, a glowing headstone here, but I don't know which one. I've been there a couple times, always during the day, and I've looked around wondering, well, which one is the glowing one? It's, people tell me about this, readers tell me about it, but unlike Veal Station, they can't tell me, oh, it's this particular stone. So that's just a little bit of vagary. However, one thing that's really fascinating about Deep Creek is that they have their ghost, you know, that you hear about, rather than being the ubiquitous lady in white who roams the perimeter, there is allegedly a lady in pink who has been sighted here. So a little different color. I don't know why that would be. I think it's kind of fascinating. I do wonder if perhaps it is the ghost of Sally Bowman. She was a 16 year old girl who was shot and killed by Comanche Indians as she was tending her dad's herd of prized horses. And there's quite a monument in her honor because the whole community of Deep Creek was just so distraught when she was shot and killed that they erected a rather pricey monument in her honor and just they just must have felt tremendous sorrow over her loss. So I don't know, maybe that, if I had to guess who this lady in pink was, I would like to think maybe it's Sally Bowman, but I don't know. I have seen some interesting paranormal photos there. People do get a lot of orbs. They get a lot of those strange lights, you know, that look like smoke kind of in the dusk. I would really enjoy going back to Deep Creek. I would go there. That's the cemetery I would go to at night for a full-on official paranormal investigation. So maybe that will happen sometime. The stars and night are big and bright in paranormal Texas. My favorite ghost town here in Texas is Thurber, Texas. For one thing, it's a ghost town, but there are two restaurants. What? <laughs> and of course, I go into more detail about Thurber in this book. I think I mentioned it in a few books because there's just a lot of really interesting history in Thurber. I think it's a really amazing town. It was uh, the first electrified town in Texas, and it was really a microcosm of everything that America was experiencing in the late 1800s to the early 1900s. It was a company town, you know, quote unquote company town, kind of like the one Tennessee Ernie Ford was singing about when he was saying, you know, I owe my soul to the company store. They had a company there uh, that owned the entire town. The town was fenced. That was to keep union organizers from coming into the town. It was a coal mining town and they had immigrants from like 18 different nations working there. So I have heard from paranormal investigators that they have caught EVPs in other languages, like in Italian and in Polish. So this is quite an interesting cemetery. Uh, there's also a, allegedly a ghost who sings opera, which is kind of cool. There were a lot of Italian immigrants who worked in Thurber in the 1800s and early part of the century and they actually had an opera house there. And the Metropolitan Opera was traveling cross country and they actually stopped in Thurber and gave a performance. 
So, you know, it was a, a rather notable town in the day and now it's just kind of nothing. And it's got this beautiful, wonderful cemetery with a lot of stories behind those stones. Um, but as far as paranormal activity goes, I know about that opera singing ghost. And like I said, this is a real, supposed to be a primo spot for EVPs. And just don't think it's gibberish. Pay attention, maybe you're hearing something in another language. The stars and lights are big and bright in paranormal Texas. This next story takes us to North Richland Hills, and we're going to be talking about Smithfield Cemetery, which was established in 1887. Now, this cemetery, unlike a lot of the other ones we've spoken about, is in the middle of town. It's not out in the boonies. So you can drive right by it when you're headed to a business. There's like a restaurant nearby. There's a daycare center. There's church. There's all sorts of things. It's just in the midst of everything. I mention that because the story I want to tell you, a woman shared with me after I'd given a talk and she said I could share this story, you know, and I do actually, I share it in, I think, Paranormal Texas, but she did not want me to use her name. So a few years ago, she and her 12-year-old son, she was driving him to school, and he's quite, even though he's 12, he's quite a Civil War history buff, and he knew a lot about the clothing they would wear, and, and he was just, you know, that was his thing, is some kids get interested in a certain era, and they learn a lot about it. So as they were driving by, she noticed a group of people standing at the entrance of the cemetery, and she said they were like walking in, Kind of marching in and they were in kind of in the corner of her eye she like in civil war garb so she's thinking oh my goodness this must be a civil war reenactment i mean those happen so she thought wow and her son saw it too he was very excited he's like hey mommy mommy you know i want to see this so she turns around thinking oh what a great learning opportunity and she you know maybe goes one block and has to turn around she said it couldn't have been more than two or three minutes not enough time for a large group of people like she saw maybe 30 40 people to just disappear but as you can imagine that's exactly what happened they come back they look at the entrance completely and empty it's not she even drove in you can drive right in she looked all around she said she and her her son they're totally baffled it wasn't like they there wasn't any place they could have gone that many people if it had been one or two people she could have accounted for it, but this was a whole group that just poof, disappeared. I've been there many times. It's a gorgeous cemetery with a lot of wonderful blooming plants, especially go there in the spring. It's a really great time, but I just, oh, I, I take lots of photos and I'm always scouring them afterwards. I would love to catch a photo of, you know, a soldier or a person, but she actually saw a whole group of people. The stars and lights are big and bright. Last but not least, we're going to drop by Aurora Cemetery. I'm not talking about the space alien grave there from 1897. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I invite you to watch my video about that. Uh, I, yeah, I think I've written about that in a few books. I wrote about it in this one too. Um, and it's also, I think, the most watched video I have on my channel. So I'll share that. But the one I want to talk about today, because I, I don't think anyone has done a paranormal investigation at the alien grave, although it kind of makes sense. I think that would be a great place to try and get an EVP or something. There is a really spooky grave in Aurora Cemetery. I think this is the creepiest one of all. That's why I saved it for last. It's the grave of a North Texas serial killer named Ricky Lee Green. And I do have a full video about him. It explains more details about him. Ricky Lee Green was a horrific serial killer. Uh, he raped and sexually mutilated several people. I think he was convicted of four murders. He was suspected of at least eight more. Uh, he was put to death by lethal injection in 1997. But his tombstone, which is pretty unobtrusive, you could walk right by it, not think a thing about it uh but people do pick up evps there i've heard some evps of like a man's voice there 
I haven't tried to get anything there. This story just freaks me out so much. I just, ugh. but if that's your thing, this might be the story. This might be the, the grave that you want to go and investigate. I find it really super scary and creepy. Like I would only, I read a book about him. I would only read it during the daylight. Serial killers just scare me. So read my book if you dare look in paranormal Texas. Pack your grip, let's take a trip through paranormal Texas.